Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, you're going to learn about the approvals tables at the Dataverse. In the past week, I was working in a project and I got the challenge to approve or reject an approval directly on the Dataverse table from Power Apps or other automations that you are de dealing with the approvals tables. To approve an approval, from this system, to, from the solution, the approval solution, you need to work with the data verse tables, right? For that, go directly on your Power Apps or Automate, find the tables, and let's learn about what we need to understand from these tables to approve or reject a basic approval. I will insert here, approve. After that, click on all, and we're going to see a lot of approval tables, but we don't need to deal with all these tables. We just need to understand each one of them. We have the approval table where we stored the data from the approval, like the details. Uh, we can open each one of them, but we don't need to learn about all of these tables. If you, you like me, is working a project and need to approve or reject, we need to change some data in specific tables here that, that will be the approval the request and the response. The request, actually, you don't need to change anything. We're going to work just with response and the approval table. Let's understand a little bit more about it. Approval, it's the table, let me open here, where is is stored all the data about the details of this approval. Here we can click on more to see all the columns. You can click here to, to uh, see all the rows we have all the approval, the approval, each row here, it's a single approval and their data. So for example, this first one have this detail, have uh, dates, have an item link to, to, the, to a SharePoint item. And every time we, we create a single approval, a row is inserted here. Let's make it more clear. Let's create a, a flow that it starts in and uh, wait for an approval, right? So create an approval. After that, I will insert here to approve or reject. And here is the challenge, because if it is just the first to respond or everyone, you're going to work with the data from the table responses, right? So we're going to understand this further. Let, let's, let's just select here first to respond and after creating this approval, it will be at the new row in my approvals table. Okay, we'll have an unique ID. Each row here is an approval. So let's write here some data, data from this class and title is title from the approval of the class assign it to, and I will assign that to me so I can see the, the approval, right? So let's assign to me here. And after creating this approval, I want to show you two things. I want to have a parallel branch where at one side, we're going to wait for an approval and at the other side, at the parallel branch, we're going to start to use the Dataverse table and just complete the approval. Right now, I need you to understand. When I create this, I will have the approval ID. Select here, approval ID. And here, I will insert also the approval ID, right? I will save and run this flow. We can see the approval is being created, right? And at this table, at this table, if I refresh and sort the column created on, by date, older to newer, oh, newer to old, right? I will see the first one here, the approval that we just created. So, so, so you can understand, we can see here oh, the details data from this class, okay? And also the title and other stuff like the priority. It's a basic approval, right? It's an active approval, it's painting for the responses, not, not completed. So. All that we need to understand here is these columns, the status, the status reason, and we can see all is waiting for the responses. With, with this ID right here, okay, we can click, copy this ID, and move to the approval 
request and also the, the approval response. Let's see what's, what is showing here. Here we can see that we have the approval. At the approval request, this row right here, that means the options to this approval. So if I go further, we're going to see the options. So this row, it's used to save about the request. We don't need to change anything here. It's just an information that is, is good to know, okay? But we don't need to change anything at this table. What we need to work with is the approval responses. This table, if we check, we're going to see that we don't have any new rows. This table right here saves the response from the approvers. If I go at my teams and approve or reject request right here, this table that have three rows will be add a new row. Let's refresh. Let's wait a little bit. Check it out. The first row right here with this approval ID index, it's the same, it's the same of this table. So they connect. They are saying this response is from this approval right here. Now you're getting it, right? So to approve a risk, uh, approval request, we need to insert a new row right here. And what we need to use at this table, basically the ID of the approval and also other data like the response following and the status and status reason. Committed, inactive, and the approved response. So here is how to approve that request. For that, we're going to go here and insert the Dataverse connector. And the first thing that we need to insert here is to add a new row. We will add a new row into the approval responses. First parameter, it's the link to the approval, right? So we are adding a new response to the approval link. For that, we use the following statement, slash the table schema name, right? The, the logical name, that is this one for, for the approval and enter with the approval ID that we already have uh, inserted in this compose, right? So I'm going to use the compose. Let's change the name to make it more clear. ID, uh, approval ID, right? Let's use this output, approval ID. Approval stage key. Let's understand what is the approval stage key. You can check it out all the stages is basic. Like I said, if you are working with uh, a more complex approval, you will need to understand the stage table and how it works. Uh, but for, for most of the case, it's just a basic approval like this one. So it will work like that. You just need to insert at this, this flow right here, basic, okay, basic. The name, it's something uh, random. You don't need to insert anything. It's just a name. You can use like UTC now and something like that. Let's use the UTC now and right here, automatically updated. The response, it's the magic, right? So will be approve or reject. That's why I showed you the approval request table. So you can check what options that I have available. In most cases, like you are seeing here, it's approve or reject. But if you are using custom texts, custom bu buttons, like others than approve or reject, or more buttons, you will need to understand the response option to use at that table, right? Because uh, you need to check. In my case, I just use approve or reject. So I will insert here that is, for example, an approve so the response you're going to insert approve or reject like the approval request table okay this stage right here like we showed you before is basic so you can insert basic here you don't need to to change it's the same as here you can also instead of using basic let me show you 
The table starts stories like that. Take a look. The idea of approval underline basic. So it's an option. Okay, you can store like this. Okay, so in approval stage key, you can save like that. And at the, 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 the other column, the column stage, you can use the basic. You can see the options here, basic, completed, not specified. But all of this is using basic, so I will use basic too. The last one is the status reason. Committed, reviewing, or save. I'm going to insert reviewing because if I try to use committed or saved, it don't work. Okay, so I insert reviewing here. It's the reason that works. All of that is because it's required. The last parameter that you should use here is the comments, where the comments receives the owner's comment. So here is the comment that the user, when approve or reject, can insert at this field right here. I'm going to insert a comment. Okay, let's test it out. Let's check if it is working. It's running, creating an approval. Here we can see the status that is not approved yet. But we, if we open it, take a look. I cannot, I cannot mark as approved or reject. So I'm not able to do it anymore. Because we already have a row that was inserted here. Like you can see here that it was created by me, not by the Microsoft Flow CDS. And because of that, I'm not able, okay, I'm not able to change that. After some minutes waiting, this approval, now it's marked up as an approved. The solution is ready after some minutes to mark as approved in the table approvals. We can do it before of the solutions if you want. I will show you again what is going on, okay? I will test it manually, again, manually. Save and test. An approval will be created and also will be started on a wait for an approval. If I just wait, this status is going to be changed to approved or rejected, right? You, you will send the, the status at the add new row. In some cases, you want to just mark up as approved more fast. For that, you can use the updater row. Come here to this table, approvals, and at the row of the ID that you just created, you can change the status. So here, take a look. This one right here, active and pending. It's the approval that we are awaiting. I will wait a little bit more here so you can understand what's going on. The approval solution is ready to get this trigger and change here to complete it and inactive this status and also change, change the result if you want to approve or reject. Here, we can just wait a little bit more. Here's it. I just saw the pop-up that showed me that the, the approval is approved. It, it, it took like five minutes, guys, to change the status right here to approved. You can use the update row with the, the approval ID. The stage completed, the status reason completed. Completed on with the UTC now, your result and also the status as inactive. And this way, after marking up as, as approved or reject, we can close that close the, the approval. So in this, this way, the user can, will not be able to cancel the request. So let's check it out. When I run this flow, it will add a new row as a response and also update the row like you are seeing here. The problem is that the waiting for approval keeps running right here. That's a problem if you need that, right? And going to the teams, you can see this one right here marked up as approved. So I just approve and cancel the approval request at the same time. Summarize this video if you need to approve or reject an approval from Power Apps with or with an automated Cloudflow uh, you. 
can do it using the approval response with these parameters right here that is showing on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content about the approvals or more deep dive into the tables, comment down below. I will be happy to know if I need to create more content like this for you. If you watch this video to the end, comment down the word banana. So I will know that you watch it to the end. It's a way of knowing who watched the, the video completed. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, share so we can grow up here and bring more free content to you. We'll see you in another video, in another class and please subscribe.